Traditionally, the Penn State Nittany Lions are one of the top programs in all of college football, and typically year in and year out, they are fighting for a Big Ten championship and a 10-win season. Fortunately, last year was a little bit tough, as they had their worst start in a long, long time. They looked pretty bad, and some were wondering if James Franklin was still the guy for the job. Going into 2021, Penn State returns a lot of talent, the Nittany Lions are ready to bounce back, and they have a schedule that's not too terrible, so I do believe Penn State will be back to where they were before. In today's video, we're going to preview the 2021 Penn State team, go through their roster, talk about their recruiting, some of the major storylines, and then go through the schedule to get an accurate assessment of what we can expect from this team in 2021. But it won't just be me, as I am joined by my friend Alex from the Gridiron Expert, who does expert schedule analysis and picks for betting, and you definitely need to check out his channel if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Before we get started, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed, so I'd really appreciate it if you take a quick moment to hit that button, as it'll really help the channel, and you won't want to miss out on any more college football content. Now let's get started, and let's preview Penn State football for 2021. As always, we are going to start out with a roster preview, and let's first take a look at the 2021 recruiting class. James Franklin hauled in the 6th best class in the Big Ten and the 21st ranked class nationally, which included 6 four-star recruits and multiple impact players. Franklin also had a presence in the transfer portal as he landed a total of 6 guys, one of which will be extremely high impact in running back transfer John Lovett from Baylor. Flashing forward to the actual roster itself, let's first start with the quarterbacks. They return one of the most experienced guys in the country in Sean Clifford, and while some love and some hate him, Clifford has actually been pretty solid in his career. And for the most part in 2019, he played very spectacular, but in 2020, he'd have a tough start and was eventually benched for Will Levis, who would transfer to Kentucky. I expect Clifford to have a bounce back year, and I think he really fits this system well. In terms of the backup position, things are a little bit worrisome, as they will have Taquan Roberson, who's a solid backup, and then they'll have a true freshman four-star by the name of Christian Velo. There's only three scholarship guys on the team after Micah Bowens transferred to Oklahoma, so while the depth may not be there, I believe Sean Clifford will have a big year, and I'm fine with this quarterback room. Penn State always has good running backs and is usually the best unit on the team, and that is no different going into 2021. The starter, in my opinion, will be none other than Noah Kane, and he has been spectacular so far, but he has not been able to stay on the field as he's had injuries his first two years. After that, you get Baylor transfer John Lovett, and then Kayvon Lee really started to show some flash last year as a freshman. Behind that, you have Devin Ford, who's one of those guys that's getting overlooked, and then you'll have true freshman Kazia Holmes. Penn State typically produces some solid wide receivers as they have some guys who are doing spectacular in the NFL right now. This year's unit will be at strength as they have two really good players in Jahan Dotson and Parker Washington, as Dotson will likely be one of the best in the Big Ten, and Washington will be one of the best youngsters in the country. The other starter should be Keandre Lambert-Smith, and after that you have a couple guys. You have Cam Sullivan-Brown, Daniel George, and redshirt freshman Malik Mega. While I'm not exactly sure who steps up out of those next four guys, I'm excited to see what happens. In terms of the rest of the offense, they will lose one of the best tight ends in school history in Pat Fryermuth, but they will likely replace him with Brenton Strange, Theo Johnson, or Tyler Warren. After that, you'll have a couple guys at the offensive tackle spot, which will include Dez Holmes, Bryce Effner, Rasheed Walker, and Caden Wallace. And at the guard and center spot, you'll have Eric Wilson, Mike Miranda, Dez Holmes, Juice Scruggs, and Nick Dawkins. Since I'm not a diehard Penn State fan and it's extremely difficult to find all the up-to-date stuff, be sure to let me know if there's a player I left out a name I butchered, or someone that I missed. Now let's talk about the defense. At the defensive tackle spot, you'll have Derek Tangelo, Fred Hansard, PJ Mustafer, or Ayanis Hawkins. At defensive end, you'll have guys like Arnold Ebiquete, Nick Tarburton, Adiza Isaac, Smith Vilbert, and Zariah Fisher. At the linebacker spots, you're gonna have to replace Micah Parsons and guys like Ellis Brooks, Jesse Lucetta, Charlie Catshear, and Brandon Smith should all step up. Finally, as we take a look at the secondary, guys like Jaquan Brisker, Jonathan Sutherland, Jair Brown, and Tyler Rudolph should all play. And then at the corner spots, you'll have guys like Tariq Castro-Fields, Johnny Dixon, Keaton Ellis, and Marquise Wilson. Now I'm going to turn it over to Alex from the Gridiron Expert to analyze their schedule and the rest of their season. Penn State won their final four games and carried tons of momentum into 2021. And when you look at their schedule, one thing is for sure. They're not going to start 0-5 again. They return so much talent on both sides of the ball, and this schedule lines up perfectly for Penn State to have a major bounce-back season under James Franklin. They open up at Wisconsin in Week 1, and this to me is a battle between two teams that are looking to bounce back in a big way. Penn State going 4-5 and five last year, Wisconsin going just 4-3. and three. But at the end of the day, the major factor in this game is the battle in the trenches, a battle that Wisconsin is going to win. 
The Badgers had the better offensive line. They certainly had the better defensive line at Camp Randall Stadium. Penn State, I believe, drops this game in what could be a low-scoring defensive affair. They come back home, their first game at home of 2021. They take on Ball State. And for many, they would just brush over this game. We do think Penn State wins this game. But don't sleep on the Cardinals, guys, a team that beat Buffalo for the MAC championship last year and then annihilated San Jose State in their bowl game. This team is a MAC favorite for a reason. Penn State cannot afford to overlook Ball State, but they should beat them. They should beat Villanova. But right in between there, they have that game against Auburn, one that many believe could be the whiteout game in Happy Valley. And Auburn's the team that is quite the anomaly in the SEC. Uh, many say they could go as best as 8-4 and four or 9-3. and three. Some have them not even making the postseason. Brian Harson certainly has his work cut out for him in his first year on the Plains. But coming to Happy Valley in just the third game of the year, the third week of the year, is not ideal for a Tigers team that's still trying to find their identity under a brand new coaching staff. I like Penn State to beat this SEC opponent at home, and I think they win this game by double digits. They get into Big Ten Conference play to begin October, and that is a game against Indiana. Whether you thought Michael Penix was short or not, it's up to you, but at the end of the day, the Hoosiers still got the win last year in Bloomington. And if you don't think that Penn State has a little revenge on their mind, then you're wrongly mistaken. The game is in Happy Valley, and while Indiana has a chance to be even better than they were last year, I believe Penn State beats the Hoosiers, again, with revenge on their mind. The Indiana game last year deflated Penn State. I think the major reason why they started 0-5. That, among injuries, opt-outs, and so many other things. They want revenge against the Hoosiers, and they're going to get it at home. They travel to Kinnick Stadium to take on Iowa, and as we all know, Kinnick Stadium is such a difficult place to play. Such a difficult place to play. Not many teams can go in there and win, but Penn State has won their last three in Iowa City. The last two actually coming by a combined seven points, so it's been very, very close. But I think this Iowa team's a bit different. They're a different breed. Their defense is once again going to be one of the best in the nation, certainly one of the best in the Big Ten. And the offense, I believe, finds their groove under quarterback Spencer Petras and their star running back Tyler Goodson. I do believe Kinnick Stadium once again proves to be the difference maker in this one. Iowa won by 20 last year. They're going to win this one again, but by one possession at home. Penn State gets their bye week and gets a great little prep game against Illinois. They beat the Fighting Illini by 35 last year, 56 to 21. And you can expect a similar result now. Fresh off a week of rest at home, an Illinois team that, like Auburn, like many other programs, are dealing with a brand new head coach, different schemes. Doesn't really matter that Illinois has so many returning players from last year, a team that went just 2 and 6. Penn State wins big, a good tune up for the road game at Ohio State. They only fell to the Buckeyes by 13 last year in Happy Valley, and that game came right after the devastating Indiana loss. And many want to say that Ohio State could drop a few games this year, but I'm telling you, if they do, it's not going to come at home, and it's not going to come at Penn State. Ohio State is just simply too good. The offense will have found their groove by October 30th. Whoever's under center will be doing just fine, and the defense, I believe, has enough to shut down Sean Clifford and this Penn State offense that we do think improves but not enough to win in Columbus. Ohio State wins by at least 10 in this one. Maryland annihilated Penn State in Happy Valley last year. And again, it's one of those games where you can have revenge on your mind. We think that Penn State goes on the road and beats Maryland, a team that, like we've already discussed, we believe their offense is going to be just fine with Talia Tungabailoa and all of his returning wide receivers. But Mike Loxley has to whip the defense in shape. Maryland's secondary is going to be a force to be reckoned with, but how are they going to fare against the run? Noah Kane could have a big day on the ground in this one. That's what we're expecting. With revenge on their mind and a Maryland team that we think fizzles out towards season's end, Penn State gets this win. Their final three games are extremely favorable. Michigan at home, a team that no one really knows what to expect from this year, but a team that seems to always fail to live up to expectations under Jim Harbaugh. Michigan has failed to win in Happy Valley. They struggle to win in Happy Valley. Usually these teams alternate wins based on whoever the home team is. Penn State ended that streak last year by winning in Ann Arbor. They're going to win again now on their home turf. They will defeat Rutgers in the second-to-last game of the year, senior night for the Nittany Lions, and then a road game at Michigan State, a team that is improving under Mel Tucker, should improve drastically on the offensive side of the ball, but defensively is still a little ways away from really taking down some of the Big Ten elite. We think Penn State goes on the road in East Lansing, gets a comfortable win, and finishes 9-3 and three, just one year after going 4-5. and five. The Nittany Lions are going to bounce back, and they're going to bounce back in a big way. 
So yeah, I pretty much agree with Alex's statement regarding Penn State season, as the games that will determine all of this will be the Wisconsin, Auburn, Iowa, Indiana, Ohio State, and Michigan games, and Rutgers, Maryland, and Ball State could all be potential trap games. I expect Sean Clifford to bounce back, the running back room to be spectacular, and for Penn State to potentially make a New Year's Six Bowl and compete for the Big Ten East if a few things go their way. What do you guys think though? If you're a Penn State fan, please be sure to let me know your thoughts, how you think you guys will do, and anything that we got wrong. Before you go, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my preview for 2021 Ohio State. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.